Let's do it. Theorem. As you expect it to say, it says E is irrational. And here we go. Proof. Well, we start out by recalling what we just wrote down, that E is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus up to typical term 1 over n factorial plus out to infinity. And so we can let S sub n, the nth partial sum, be 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus up to 1 over n factorial, period. Okay? Partial sum always ends here at that point. So that's the nth partial sum. So then part one of the proof, part one of the proof says then for any n, I'm talking about n equal 1, 2, 3, etc., we can write the following. And here is the entire argument for this first part. I like this argument. It's really quite nice, and it uses the notion of geometric series we talked about. Zero is less than e minus s sub n. Now, that's certainly true, because s sub n is the partial sum of e, which is the infinite sum. So you take that away, you've got something left. That's positive. Okay, equals, and then what's left if you take that away? Well, you have 1 over n plus 1 factorial, because remember, the nth partial sum ends with 1 over n factorial. So this is the next term. Plus, let me write out a couple more here. n plus 2 factorial plus 1 over n plus 3 factorial plus dot, 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 out to infinity. Now, let me factor that by taking out the 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Okay? What's left? 1 plus 1 over n plus 2, because this is just one number beyond n plus 1 factorial, plus this one is two numbers beyond, so it's 1 over n plus 3 times n plus 2, plus dot, 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 out to infinity. Now here is a crucial step. This, I claim, is less than 1 over n plus 1 factorial times 1 plus, and now I'm going to replace 1 over n plus 2 by 1 over n plus 1. Is that legitimate? Sure it is. I'm claiming that this is greater. I'm claiming that 1 over n plus 1 is greater than 1 over n plus 2. Well, sure it is. The denominator is smaller, so that means the fraction is bigger. Same thing here. I will make the denominator smaller by making the n plus 3, n plus 2 into n plus 1, n plus 1, which is n plus 1 squared, plus, and I continue that process. But now we recognize that we have a geometric series here. So it's a geometric series, and the r for the geometric series is 1 over n plus 1. That is clearly less than 1, so that means we can use the sum formula we learned in a previous segment, that this is 1 over n plus 1 factorial times 1, which is the a here, over 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. So there's no more dots here going out to infinity. We have a nice summation formula. And the rest of this is a bit of algebra. We want to simplify all of this in short. So this is 1 over n plus 1 factorial times. Let's see what we get here. We get 1 over on the bottom. We're going to get a single fraction, denominator n plus 1. And we have n plus 1 minus 1 on the top. n plus 1 minus 1 is n. So I have n over n plus 1 on the bottom. Since this is a, re a fraction, it will a reciprocal, it will flip over. So this is 1 over n plus 1 factorial times n plus 1 over n. Well, of course, the n plus 1 there and the n plus 1 here will cancel, leaving n factorial on the bottom. So this is now 1 over n factorial times n. So let me put this all together because this was a really long expression. We have e minus s sub n greater than 0 and less than this object at the bottom. So let me put that, like I say, all on one page. We can keep track of this. Thus, we have the conclusion that 0 is less than e minus s sub n, less than 1 over n times n factorial. And I want to do one last little calculation. I'm going to take the n factorial here and just move it up to there by multiplying through by n factorial. So I end up with this. 0 is less than n factorial 
times e minus s sub n less than 1 over n. And that's what I wanted to conclude here. So this is my starred statement, that this funny number in the middle, this n factorial e minus s sub n number, whatever it is, is between 0 and 1 over n. And that's for any n. Remember, for any n, 1, 2, 3, et cetera. OK, that's the result I needed. That's the first part of the proof. Now, I'm going to use that result to actually address the heart of the proof. Two, we will assume, as I've done before, by way of contradiction, by way of contradiction, that the opposite of what we believe to be true is true. We will say that E is rational. OK? Say, to be specific, that E is equal to P over Q, where P and Q are in the natural numbers. We can assume positiveness because we know that E is a positive number. And we will assume in lowest terms. which means that P and Q, remember, have no common factors. OK, no common factors. OK, so we've made the assumption that E is a rational number in lowest terms. Now, let me show you what that assumption will lead to. We're hoping that it will lead to a contradiction. Now, first of all, let's choose our n that we're going to be using here. You'll see where the n comes in. We'll choose any n whatsoever that's bigger than the denominator of p over q. So certainly, no matter what we choose for that to be, certainly n is greater than 1. q could be 1 or bigger, but it's not going to be less than 1. So certainly n is greater than 1. So if we flip both sides over, that means 1 over n will be less than 1. Now that's a small observation. Then, now we go back and we pick up 1. Then by 1, what do we have? We had 0 less than n factorial times that e minus s sub n less than 1 over n. This is the part we get back from 1. Now, in this case, 1 over n is, by our choice of n, we could choose any n. We chose one bigger than q. We have 1 over n strictly less than 1. So what does this mean? Meaning. In particular, okay, look what we have here. Here is this funny number, n factorial e minus s sub n, meaning in particular that that number, n factorial e minus s sub n, is not an integer. Okay, that is not an integer because what? It's because it's between 0 and 1. If it's between 0 and 1, there are no integers in there. So whatever that number is, it's not an integer. OK, good. We know that that number is not an integer. All right. But here we have what? Let's look at that number again. n factorial e minus s sub n. There's that number. Well, e is assumed to be p over q here. That's the assumption we're hoping to contradict. But for the time being, we've assumed that it's e, e over q, p over q. So n factorial times p over q minus s sub n. And now let's just write this out a little further to see what we actually have. Running the n factorial through, I have n factorial times p over q minus n factorial times the nth sum, which is 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial, 1 over 3 factorial, plus all the way up to 1 over n factorial. And now let me do a little rearranging. Let me rewrite this first part as n factorial over q times p. It's the same as the above, but you'll see in a moment why I wrote it that way. Minus, and this time let's run the n factorial through the entire expression. Minus n factorial plus n factorial plus n factorial over 2 factorial plus n factorial over 3 factorial plus Finally, n factorial over itself, n factorial. Now observe here that recall, rather, that n is greater than q. And now I can make the crucial observation. Stay with me. n factorial over q. 
n is bigger than q. So this factorial, which is n times n minus 1, et cetera, all the way down to 1, includes among its factors q, which means q divides into this, which means this is an integer. This times p remains an integer, minus, and I claim every one of these is an integer too. n factorial, n factorial are certainly integers, and the same argument holds as over here. n factorial n is bigger than 2, so the 2 factorial divides into that. 3 factorial divides into this. n factorial certainly divides into itself. So the upshot is whatever this entire expression is, and I don't care about the details, it is an integer. And there's our contradiction, because what is this all equal to? It's equal to this number here, which we claimed just a moment ago was not an integer, being between 0 and 1. And now we've claimed that it is an integer. This is our contradiction. And the contradiction arose because we assumed that E was P over Q rational. So there is only therefore one conclusion. So E must be irrational. And there you have it. That's the end of the proof. And I hope you enjoyed that. It's rare that you get to see how certain numbers are proved irrational. Square root of 2 is irrational was included here. And showing you that E is irrational turns out to be possible with just the information that you know from college algebra, barring a couple of minor difficulties. So I hope you enjoy this. And that's it.